Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Cook and Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined by Wade Plem. Wade. Is my hat? You got marks on my head? Nah, you're alright. You know what? <laughs> you've uh, you've landed in like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm talking to Ari and he, he's talking to you. He's like, you're landed in. Yeah, bro, Why have you I'm here. I'm here. I rocked up. I told people I'd come, you know what I'm saying? When you come to Nashville, my state, you gotta you know, check in with me. Um, no, man, I, I did. I wanted to check out the presser. Whew. And these, these things are never dull, are they, right? Um, I hope that, look, see, now they're going at it again. Here we go. Here we go. Dean and, and Waleed, just keep getting into it, bro. Um, it's a good idea, right? In, 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 in practicality, I don't know if it's going to work the way they think it will because they're about to fight again um, off camera here, but the idea was good. I felt like they just should have probably told Dean before he got out here because you had him on stage yelling, have fun, I'm going to Kingpin. You can't have that, bro. And I, and I get it, you know. I wouldn't ask to be on, like, I wanted to come here as a guest, but that's the one thing I would have changed. You can't have Dean doing that. But it's probably a viral moment, so fair play. Maybe they got what they wanted out of it. Is it awkward for you in this environment after everything that happened, or do you feel at ease? No, you know, Mams is even right there. Like, I, I don't have any, any ill will toward the guys, anything like that. It's business. At the end of the day, it's business. So I, I don't really have any issues. Literally, he's right here. So it's, it's, come on, man. it's business at the end of the day, man. So it's like, at the end of the day, they're doing their thing. At, at the, that's why I rocked up because it's like, they're doing their thing. I want to come support it. These are still my guys at the end of the day. Like Misfits, I, all my buddies, the zone, all my people. So they're doing what they're doing. I'm here to support it, man. That's really it. Like, we, not, we don't agree on everything, but that's not the end of the day. I know, right? Look at this. It's crazy. It's crazy. But no, it, it, like I don't agree with everything they do. I don't mind saying that, him saying it right here. I told me as many times, I don't agree with a lot of what they do. But at the end of the day, I still support the guys doing it, right? I still want Dean and Waleed to not fucking punch each other on stage and have this thing go through. And I want the survivor tag thing to go well because it, it does help the guys out. I just don't have, always agree with what exactly they're doing at that time. And that's all I've ever said, you know. There's little shots thrown here and there. But at the end of the day, I don't hate Mams. I don't hate misfits or anything like that. You've became one of the faces of this influencer side of boxing. You've became iconic in this space, right? But whenever I looked at your face when that girl gets her boobs out, it was almost like a full circle moment. What were your instant thoughts when that happened? My first instinct was, where's my coat? I need to cover that up, honestly. Like, everybody's like, oh, wait, you're enjoying it. No, I, I didn't have my coat on, and I went to go look for it because my first instinct is a broadcaster. I know we're on live TV. That can't happen. And um, it was unfortunate, man. I know for her, for Daniela, and she's, by the way, Daniela's a sweet girl. She's super sweet. I think she got lost in the moment and something happened. But regardless, you just can't have it on live TV, man. Not on his own. It can't happen. What do you make of this Survivor tag thing? Do you think it's a good concept? As a concept, sure. As something that is going to continue going on, I don't know that it has a long lifespan. Right? I don't think that it's something that should be a mainstay. And Why? I don't think it, one, it draws away from what you're actually doing. Like you're making the main event a gimmick versus the main event a person. You know, you, you want your fighters to be the main event. You want to build the stories around your fighters. Now, you can, if, if Ryan Johnston goes in and has a great performance, maybe you built a new star there. But now you've already seen it. So you're going to do it again and again and again. At what point do you have to top that? What's the next big gimmick? What's the next big gimmick? What's that? And at a certain point, you get away from building stories around the fighters and you're building it around the gimmick itself. I'm not a big fan of that because at the end, you're giving the rub to the gimmick. At this point, you have some guys with names, but at a certain point, guys with names don't want to do gimmicks. They want to be center of attention because they deserve that. You know what I'm saying? So that's the whole point that I, I was kind of had an issue with. You want to build names, build stars. One of these can do it. Let's just try not to make it the main stay. I've got three more questions for you, right? Let's go first off with Eddie Hearn's comments about the space, about Kingpin, about Misfits. What did you make of those comments? He's right. It's, it is a little ironic, though, the way Eddie was talking, because I love Ebony Bridges. That's my girl. But she just, she jumps up on stage with damn near nothing on for her weigh-ins, and it's the double bicep, and the, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? A little hypocritical. He's also put like OnlyFans girls on his cards, which are actual boxers, but they do OnlyFans, you know. Um, but at the same time, he's right. Misfits and Kingpin 
and are not pro boxing. They're not. And I, me, when people are like, oh, you want to make it pro boxing? No, I just want stars and storytelling. I understand that none of these guys, some maybe like a Waleed or those guys could be pros, but not, no one's going to be a pro boxer. We don't want to just be pro boxing. If I wanted influence boxing to just be pro boxing, I'd just cover pro boxing. And I don't cover that near as much because I love the entertainment. I love the personalities we have in this scene. So he's not right, but he also kind of is, if it makes sense. Like he's ironically right, but he's saying it while also putting OnlyFans girls on the card. KSI Tommy Fury rumored for October 14th in Manchester due to be announced this week. How do you think that goes? Uh, Tommy, right now. Tommy wins. You think Tommy wins unanimous decision? or? Yeah, yeah, probably. Unanimous decision is, is probably the, the easiest pick just because Tommy has not shown the ability to, to put guys away like that with big, nasty shots yet. They talk about it a lot. TNT, Tommy Fury, the big fight. He hasn't showed that, right? A pretty good job. That was John. a decent John there. You know, you could do that a little bit better. Go on. Give us a few more words, sir. Yeah, Tommy got to go in and put some boy away. That's my boy, Tommy. Came from these here walls. <laughs> Where John Fury has got to call you out. Yeah, bro, no in, in terms of like KSI, though, he's a bit more of an awkward opponent than right. Jake was for Tommy, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll take, listen, anytime you get in with KSI, it's going to take a couple of rounds to adjust to him because he is a little awkward, you know. Uh, his style is a little different than you'll see in a regular boxing gym. The problem is Tommy has a pedigree, and at a certain point, you better have something else for, for higher level. And Tommy's not like a higher level boxer, but he is for our scene. And when you see it enough, patterns develop, you have to be able to, to switch a little bit. Holy My brother's in here. Shit. My brother's in here. Sorry, language. Sorry. <laughs> brothers are back together. Oh, I'm excited, my boy. You know, I can't lie yet. Oh, Waleed is here as well, the whole team. Hey, Waleed. Oh, 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 it's good to see you again, bro. <laughs> whole squad. Whole squad, man. The whole squad. Whole yeah, squad man. Is here, We're back. Man. Well, sort of back. I'm here kind of undercover infiltration. I had the hat down most of the time, but... Ams is over here, you know, we thought he was telling me how much he misses you guiding him, holding his arm. Yeah, bro, dude. bro. But we're going to see each other soon, I think. August 5th. August 5th, August 5th. Jake Paul, that was my next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me about that fight. How do you think it goes? Yeah, yeah. See you, bro. Um, the fight goes however Jake starts the fight is going to be crucial to me. Jake's got to start the fight with a statement. He's, he's had a lot of flat starts to fights, had a lot of just like come out and started slow. He can't start slow with Nate because I think Nate is a little bit of a slow starter. And if you match that energy, it's going to kind of turn into one of those ugly kind of dogfight wars. I think if Jake comes out quick, starts fast, he could put Nate Diaz out. Do you feel that Nate is a live dog in this fight? Do you think he has the ability in a boxing ring to put Jake out of there? You don't have to have a crazy amount of ability at this level. Like, you don't need to be, like, Tommy Fury doesn't have a crazy amount of ability. He does a couple things very well. He's a good balanced boxer, has a decent jab, and has volume. Nate has volume, maybe not the most technically sound boxer, but he has a lot of cardio to back it up as well. Only problem is he gets hit, and he's okay getting hit. That's another thing, he's okay getting hit. You can't fight Jake being okay to get hit, right? You have to be able to outbox him a little bit because if you get into a, a, a war with Jake, he's shown he can go eight and stay there. I just think that Nate just not going to be able to keep up. I think Jake's volume is going to be higher output. And at some point, he catches it. Last one. Kala told me that him and Mams have something huge planned for this card in Manchester it's gotta be for front. KSI Tommy Fury, right? Do you believe that involves Logan Paul? Because they said this is going to break the internet. I heard that Logan hurt himself uh, hitting a heavy bag, hurt his shoulder. I don't know if that's public, but it was on one of Jake's videos. He had said he hurt his shoulder. <laughs> Funny enough, throwing punches is how he hurt his shoulder because Logan doesn't throw punches correctly. That's why. It's called hurt my shoulder throwing a hook because he throws hooks like this. Um, it's the prime card. So I, I would say potentially you might see JD on as well. He's part of that prime team kind of thing. Um, I would say put your money down on Logan either making an appearance or maybe calling someone out. JD on being on that card and maybe even names like Kai Sana and Aiden potentially. I, I mean, I'm just I'm thinking out the top of my head. If it's this big, whatever they're talking about, probably. We had planned. Always a pleasure on IFL TV. Really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.
Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Cougar Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. <laughs>